My name is Neil Weinstein, and uh, I'm the lab manager. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, the physical facility, where to find things, you can uh, ask one of us. On the other hand, if you have any questions about the lab experiment itself, you need to ask your instructor. Today you're going to check into a locker. So there's a check-in sheet in the locker. As the name implies with uh, the locker, normally the uh, locker is going to be locked up. We'll open it up a couple of minutes before you guys come in and we'll lock it back uh, a little bit after you're done with it. You should not keep any personal stuff in there. You, although it's normally locked, it's possible that another student could use your locker during uh, a makeup session. So do not leave any personal stuff in there. Okay, well, checking in the locker means that you're going to take and check this list against the contents of the locker. So make sure that everything in here matches what's on the list. If anything is of the glassware is chipped, cracked, or broken, um, get it replaced now. Go to the stock room, tell them uh, what you need, and uh, they'll replace it. Now, besides your locker, you have access to other stuff within the room. You have access to stuff that's on the countertop, the burette stand, the drying rack, and the ring stand. There may be some stuff that's put out for that particular day, which will be on the end counter. And there are burettes against the back wall. There's also a heating equipment drawer in each section. You need to check in that stuff also. So here's the heating equipment drawer and here's the list for it. Everybody has checked in this drawer who's gone through this section. So checking in the drawer is not necessarily to make sure it's all there. It's for you to know what's there. So for example, it says that there are tongs, comma, crucible. There are crucible tongs. There is no crucible. OK, now you're going to turn this sheet in at some point today. So you won't have access to it, which means that you need to be able to know what's on here. And if you come over here on the other side of this pillar, there's this green box. And on this green box, there's, there's the two lists that you can check during the lab anytime you need to. In addition to the two uh, lists of check-in stuff, there's the opposite sides of the sheet where we have the rules that you're going to follow. Now, the overriding issue is you're expected to act responsibly at all times while you're in the lab. This includes uh, wearing some sort of eye protection and also wearing uh, shoes that completely cover your feet. If you're in the lab working and you want to come over and sit down and maybe answer some questions, work with your partner, uh, you can take any eye protection off, but you can't take your shoes off. You need to dress in a manner that avoids any loose-fitting clothing so that you don't catch yourself if you were to turn quickly. Also, that includes uh, the fact that if you have any long hair, you need to restrain it. Uh, we don't want you backing up into somebody using a Bunsen burner and catching yourself on fire. You need to clean up after yourself. So that especially applies to the balances over here. Not so much to your work area during lab. At the end of lab, yes, you need to clean up. But this needs to stay clean all the time. If you spill anything on the balance, you need to tell someone right away, either your instructor or the folks uh, in the stock room. Do not try and clean it up yourself. We don't want you moving the balances. So get help with that if it should happen. Now, in addition to uh, what I already said about equipment that you have available to 
that clearly, as I said, you have access to the balances here on this south wall. You have access to the eyewash, to the deionized water, and to the paper towels. Those four things and those four things only, everything else is off limits for stuff against that wall. Okay, now, there is no eating or drinking in the lab. So if you have brought something with you as a snack, take it outside and uh, don't do it in here. Also, never do any uh, unauthorized experiments or use any unauthorized chemicals or equipment while you're in the lab. And never begin work until your instructor's present. Now, I mentioned that there's an eye wash. If you should get some kind of chemical on your face, you need to get it off. The eye wash may not be the first thing that you want to uh, use. That is to say, the eye wash is really good at washing stuff out of your eyes. It's also pretty good at washing stuff into your eyes. So if the chemical is on your face, but it's not in your eyes yet, you might consider a damp paper towel with the water, wash it off, get as much of it off as possible, and then maybe use the eye wash. But the eye wash is not necessarily your first line of defense. However, if the chemical that you have been exposed to is already in your eyes, you need to get it out as soon as possible. You need to come over here, push on this, Stick your face in between. There's also a shower. If you were to get a large amount of chemical all over yourself, you can come over here, stand under the shower, pull down this rod, and the water will flow until you push the rod back up. There are also two fire extinguishers in the lab. One of them is over here in this metal cabinet. The other one is directly opposite in the room by the door where you came in. If you need the fire extinguisher for anything, your instructor will probably be the one to use it if he's here. Just take it out and give it to him. However, if he's not here and you need to use it, then what you need to do, let's get it out. What you need to do is to pull the pin out. You may need to twist it to get it to, to get the uh, plastic re retaining ring to break. Pull the pin out, squeeze the handle, and point the fire extinguisher at the base of the fire. Okay, now, when you enter the lab, you're expected to go and have it sit down, have a seat, and then wait for your instructor. You're going to be, have these assigned lockers. Well, that means you also have an assigned work area, and that's essentially between the sinks. If you're working with the Bunsen burner and here's the gas outlet, you'd be here. Now, clearly, if you want to use uh, a sink, this is the closer sink. However, this one is yours. So don't go infringing on other people's work area. Don't use their sink. Don't use their drying rack. Again, you can use pretty much anything you can see in here with the exception of what we said about stuff against the south wall, just the four things, the balances, the uh, deionized water tap, the eye wash, and the paper towels. You're going to make sure when you check in that none of the glassware is broken. But in the course of doing the experiment, you may wind up breaking some glassware. If you do, leave it alone. Don't touch the broken glassware. Get some help from the folks in the stockroom to clean it up. Point being, if you didn't cut yourself in the process of breaking the glass, 
we don't want you cutting yourself in the process of trying to clean it up. So, um, as I said, get some help, leave it alone, don't clean it up. Now, if you pay attention to that, you don't have to pay attention to the very next thing that I'm going to say, which is whatever you do, don't throw any broken glassware in the trash. Now, broken glass is not the only issue or only um, problem you might encounter. You have uh, the possibility of a burn. You get a burn from heat or a chemical burn. You're going to be using some hot equipment. Now, if you heat up a test tube, and suppose you've heated up this test tube, do not take the test tube and put it back into the uh, test tube rack. The test tube rack is made out of plastic. It will melt and then the test tube will fall on the floor and you'll lose your experiment and you'll screw up the test tube rack. You're going to be dealing with some hot crucibles in the course of doing this uh, experiment this semester. So do not put the hot crucibles on the counter. What you can do with the test tubes is to place them in a beaker and then place that hot, uh, place that hot object on a ceramic tile where the tile is placed on the counter. So nothing hot directly touches the countertop, be it the test tube, or a crucible later on in the semester. The reason being the countertop is also plastic and it will melt and you can see the evidence of people having placed hot stuff on the counter in the past. Okay, so we've dealt with a burn because of heat, chemical burns. If you spill something, if you know what it is, and if it's a relatively small amount, and if that chemical you know to be fairly innocuous, safe, you can clean it up yourself. On the other hand, if it doesn't fit all of those criteria, then you need to get some help cleaning it up. So talk to the folks in the stockroom again, and we'll get something done about getting it cleaned up. Uh, okay, now. So you need to be careful with the hot equipment and uh, also with the chemicals, obviously. At the end of each lab period, you need to return the chemicals and everything that you have, all the equipment, to where you got it from. If you got it out of your locker, it goes back into your locker. If you got it off the countertop, it goes back there. If you wash some glassware and it originally came out of your locker, needs to come off the drying rack and back into your locker. Now, uh, leave your work area clean and dry. So you need to wipe down the counter. You need to dry it off. Uh, your sink is part of your work area. You need to clean it out. You do not need to dry it off. And then finally, wash your hands when you leave the lab. There is hand soap. It's here. There's also a glass cleaning solution for your labware. Do not use one for the other. Okay, now a um, couple more things, then we'll talk about makeups. You never know exactly what the weather's going to be like in here, so it's a good idea to wear layered clothing. That way you can adjust to what's going on. If you're measuring out a volume of liquid and you've got liquid in here and you want to measure it here, do not put this down on the counter, go down on one knee and start pouring. Yes, you want the measuring device to be at your eye level, but you always want to bring the measuring device up to your eye level, not go down to it. So you should be measuring it here. 
The reason being that if something were to spill and your face is at the level of the countertop, then um, it's not a good place to be. So avoid that by bringing everything up to your eye level. Don't go down to it. Also, your uh, lab uh, notebook is meant to be a permanent record of what you do in here. As such, it needs to be done in ink. On the other hand, if you've got uh, a test tube and something in it and you want to label it, what's in the test tube this week is likely not to be in the test tube next week. So any labeling of the test tube is temporary. There's a marking spot on each of the test tubes. You can write on it. Write on it in pencil. That way you can erase it. The ink won't come off. OK. If you've got no other questions, we'll talk about makeups. When you do, when you miss a lab, you need to get a hold of me to schedule the makeup. And you do that through email. You need to tell me what course you're in, who your instructor is, what day you missed lab, and what lab you missed. You also need to offer up some possible times when you can do the makeup. You need to do this promptly. Part of Doing the makeup is getting the permission from your instructor to do that. So not only do you have to contact me through email, you have to get written permission from your instructor, which you can then show me, and then we'll schedule a makeup time.